Hey, what's up? I got some more lore content for you guys. Along with my recently updated new player's guide, I wanted to show you guys three more beginner-friendly decks to jumpstart your climb in Legends of Runeterra. This is a sequel to the video I made a few months ago, so I won't be sharing those decks again. If you want to play Spiders, Scouts, or Ash, then that video is where you want to start. I'll be covering three additional decks focused around the starter decks that the game gives you with adjustments and refinements. If you're a new player trying to get into the game, then this video is for you. I made three budget, easy to play, and powerful decks that are intuitive for new players to hop on and get that early lead over your opponents. These decks can be crafted using primarily commons and rares. There are a few epic cards to slot in, but I'll talk about what to replace them with in the meantime while you work up the resources to finalize these decks, and each deck code will be in the description below along with the Mobilytics links. Before I get into the video, if you're new, please consider hitting the subscribe button to stay up to date with my content. Our journey to 10k subs is still going strong. I also stream on Twitch often, so check me out over there if you're looking for live gameplay of someone who's hit high master tier every season and even hit rank 1 in NA a while back. With that, I hope you enjoyed this video. Also, a quick disclaimer, you won't be able to build these decks as is day one or anything. These are simply decks to build early and work towards as a new player while learning the fundamentals of the game. Most likely, you will start with the default versions of these decks and then use the resources you get to refine them to the final versions that I have in this video. As I mentioned before, I don't want to recover Spiders, Scouts, or Ash because those lists are still very powerful from the previous video that I made. I wanted to focus on the decks that you see here. These are some of the starter decks that you get after completing the tutorial and going through the prologue route. So I wanted to refine them and get them you know, up to date for anyone who wants to build variations of these decks. So getting right into it, the first deck I have is Yasuo Leona because you are given two Yasuo and two Leona and they do have synergy together since there are some uh, stun cards that are shared between the Daybreak and the Yasuo packages. So we have Solari Soldiers, a Daybreak card. Daybreak basically means you get the bonus if it's the first card you play that round and then Daybreak is turned off for the rest of the turn. So you definitely want to use your Daybreak wisely. Then you have uh, Faye Blade Twirler, which is an ambient threat. It stays on the board every time you stun a recall. Uh, gains attack and that can get really scary really fast. El Cascade to draw also teaches new players Nightfall which is the opposite of Daybreak so as long as you don't play night, uh, Nightfall card first you get the bonus effects so you can do a Daybreak into a Nightfall and there's synergy there. Very nice. Uh, also drawing a card super good. We have more Daybreak stuff because Daybreak helps us level Leona who is an absolute powerhouse card. Very strong to come down on turn 4 and we use her as an overwhelm win con if she's leveled and keep uh, pushing damage that way. And we also have Yasuo, who deals damage every single time you stun an enemy while he's on the board. He can help clear out annoying units. Really, really good defensive strategy. Uh, and then we have Wind Swept Hillock. So this has made Yasuo decks pretty good nowadays. Uh, Yasuo was a meme card for years, but now Hillock actually pushes him into uh, mid-tier viability. And I think he's actually quite good. So when I'm summoned, draw Yasuo, which has been something that he's uh, missing forever. And also immediate stun. And when whenever you gain the attack token, so every time it's your attack turn or if you gain the attack token through some other uh, cheeky means, then he can uh, deal damage to the stun target. You're getting stuns off left and right. Really, really cool. So the biggest problem with this deck for new players is that you start with two Leona, two Yasuo, so you need to invest extra champion wild cards. And also the Windswept Hillock, as good as it is, it is an epic wild card. So you're going to have to build up some resources and get those in. Uh, so it'll probably look something like this at first. Also, we're not running Divergent Paths um, unless we have the Hillican. So until you can get to the finalized version, which will be in the description below again, you're probably going to have to run some other stun cards or maybe some other draw. You could take, uh, let's see, what's this? Probably not that. You could run Gifts. Gifts is pretty good. You could run Steel Tempest, which I like. You could run like Steel Tempest for now and maybe Three of Eye of Raharok and call it a day. Right, so you'd run something similar to this, definitely take notes, try out this list, and then get to the finalized version, which again will look like this. It's a very fun deck, and I highly recommend new players to try it, especially uh, League of Legends players that enjoy Yasuo. I think it's a really cool play style. You get to sit back, you get to farm, you get to deal damage. It's really, really cool. And that about wraps it up for the deck profile. Now here's a live commentary game so you can see how the deck plays out. I'll be giving context to why I'm playing certain cards, and hopefully it gives you a good feel on how to play the deck. Alright, for the showcase game, we have Riven Gwen, which is a very aggressive deck. 
So I'm glad we have the defensive stuns to try to uh, stop their win con, right? So they're going to be trying to attack us aggressively, and we're going to be trying to slow them down. So we're going to go ahead and pitch the Deny and the Priestess. I really like the utility of Concussive Pumps. We're going to keep that, and also Leona. Nice! We got a good curve here. We can play a 1-drop on 1, a 2-drop on 2, and we're in a pretty good spot. Go ahead and play our Solari Soldier. That's plus one Daybreak. Again, we're trying to get to the four so that we can level up Leona. Go ahead and Shield Bearer. My faith protects me. Okay, we can play Solari Priestess on three and Leona on four, and that will be Leona level. I'll go ahead and swing with both. Is that all you got? Yeah. Sunway. We're going to try to keep um, board pressure by playing our units and trying to do good attacks and blocks. Yep, go ahead and play this. Alright, so invoking allows us to get premium units or removal, both of which are pretty good. I think removal might be better for us, so maybe we could go for the meteor shower. Um, maybe falling comet though, so we can deal with their champions. I kind of like that. Daylight warms the heart and lights the way. Just in case they're on buffs. And we can also double block this. I'm kind of down, or actually just block this. How about that? Yeah, let's just block here. I don't mind taking two damage because I want to stun it with Leona. Yeah, so let's go ahead and play our Leona. She's going to level here. Daylight breaks on the battlefield. I am the bulwark against darkness. It's also a stun. The sun's splendor reveals. Which is helpful for our Yasuo. Play on, play on. Let's just swing with the Leona. She's going to deal extra damage through the 1 HP Ghastly Band if they block because of Overwhelm, so we're going to push 3 here. I think we're in a pretty okay spot. We have a lot of defensive tools in our hand. When we draw into Yasuo, he's probably already going to be leveled because of how much stunning we're about to do. We will not suffer unbelievers. Yep. They will not escape punishment. So the way Leona works is if she's already leveled, every time you daybreak you get a free stun. Which is super good for us. We can do that once per turn until we draw Ravoon, and then we can do multiple. Oh wow, okay. Yeah, let's go ahead and block here and here. I'm also down to Pale Cascade, making our unit live and also drawing a card. Nice! Blade Twiller is also great with Leona because of the stun synergy. Again, we get a stun every turn. Ooh, Vile. Um, okay. Can't stop that. Blade Twiller is good. Let's get a stun. Invoke, uh... Warrior is good and so is Traveler. Unlike guiding, my brethren. Traveler lets us invoke again and find even more. Oh, huh? okay. Vengeance is pretty chill. We still get that stun off. My spirit shines. Go ahead and attack. Glimpse. Alright, gonna turn that card into extra resources for them. Pretty smart. Little do they know, we have another Leona. Oh, and our Yasuo is set up too. Alright. Go ahead and Leona. See, now we're gonna start getting out of control here. When? Goodbye. 100% just going to use our generated removal card and get rid of it. Goodbye. Not dealing with that right now. We should have the opponent on a lockdown once we develop this Yasuo. And that's a really scary overwhelm unit. Uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and take five. I think we'll be okay. 
Yep, and then we have Yasuo plus Concussive Palm. That will level him, and we're in a really good spot. Um, Yas. We also have Deny. That's fine, don't really need to care about that. Go ahead and Concussive Palm. Now we've got the upper hand. Level up our Yasuo. Destiny waits. And then we can attack with our quick attack unit, our other quick attack unit, our overwhelm unit, and yeah, we can also attack with the three too. Because if they choose to block here, then we're pushing our quick attack damage over here. Yep. Which means that if they block over here, we get three extra damage in, so it's okay to attack with him here. Yeah. I feel like we have an absolute fantastic position here. Oh my god. And the Windswept Hillock off the top. Let's go ahead and play that. Gives us another Yasuo while dealing with him right now. Yep. And then next uh, round start, when it's our turn, we're going to get another stun off. Okay. That's fine. Uh, let's go ahead and just block here. See these moves up and also block here. I see every move. And we can block here. Try to leave a dent. Taking no damage. We could use Steel Tempest and stuff, but I'm actually going to hold 4 mana for Deny so that we can play defensively. Mm, like I'll, I could do a Steel Tempest here and keep this alive. That might be a better play because they're only on 5 mana. If they were on 6 mana and could vengeance my unit, then we would hold Deny. But I think it's okay to do this. Oh, it's on. Just in case, um, I want to keep this unit alive for our attack. Okay, that doesn't really do a whole lot. That's fine. Sure. Now we've got the upper hand. Yeah, and then we have them on lockdown, so we just win on next attack. The next deck that I have for you is a refinement to the starter deck called something like Mages and Mechanics. So this is going to be taking Swain and Piltover and Zon cards together in order to win games through removal. This is a standard contr uh, control strategy that's really fun, uh, it's really enjoyable for direct damage players, and it's pretty easy to play, and it's actually the one I recommend for new players to get into the control archetype because it is very linear, it's really simple. So it's going to look like this, now this is a costly version of the deck of course, just like the Yasuo and Leona, I will be talking about uh, some replacements in the meantime, but it should look roughly like this when you get it refined. The Thermo Beam, the Ravenous Flock, because these are direct damage. Like, you can just deal 4 to something if it's stunned, or if it's already damaged, so you can execute it, right? And this has great synergy with the Arachnoid Sentry, so if you like 2 card removal combos in other card games, you'll love this. So you do Arachnoid Sentry for 3 mana, stun an enemy, and then immediately deal 4 to it at the cost of just 1, right? So it's really cool, 4 mana, 2 card combo, deal 4, while also developing a 3-2 body. Players love this. Um, you can also run a new card called Disintegrate, right? We can fit that in here as well, and maybe some Blades Edge and stuff. So there's a couple different things you can do. But again, I'll talk about that in a second. We have Culling Strike, Death's Hand, Direct Damage. Uh, this all, what we're trying to do is amp up our direct damage over the course of the game in order to level up Swain. When Swain is leveled, he then stuns uh, the opponent's units every single time you do more damage. So there's a pseudo lockdown where you get Swain on the board and also Leviathan. Leviathan round start will deal three damage to the enemy nexus, you know, an instance of one three separate times, which procs three uh, stuns for Swain and then allows you to attack. So yeah, it's really, really crazy. It's out of control. You have to see it to believe it. It's really fun. Uh, also, we have Ezreal in here as a second champion because he levels up from you targeting enemies and we're doing a lot of targets with the removal spells. So they're just immediate synergy and this is a deck that has, you know, come and gone in the meta, different variations of Swain, different variations of PNZ Noxus control. So it's a great gateway to get into other decks like those as well like the Tybulk deck that's going around, or any decks, you know, that play control, other things like that. So for the budget option, um, you don't start with three Sway, and I think you start with two, and you start with Vi. So we can go ahead and take out Ezreal until you can craft him. You can definitely put in the two Vi, I think that's fine. 
Uh, drop Swain, drop Pharon. You're definitely going to want Leviathan and maybe one Pharon if you start with him. I don't quite remember, but you're going to want to craft these Leviathans right away. It's really, really important for Swain. And then you can run uh, Disintegrate. Disintegrate. And maybe a Blade's Edge. Maybe three of those. And then we can drop the two Leviathan. So yeah, the deck probably looks more like this with just your commons and your rares. But as soon as you can get the refinements to throw on the Ezreal, throw on the Leviathan, throw on the Pharon, you'll have the finalized list. But this is a great way to start learning the deck and start learning damage control right away. Again, this is what it will look like when it's refined, and the code is in the description below. And that's it for the deck profile. Now here's a live showcase game, just like the last one. I'll be giving context to why I'm playing certain cards, and hopefully it gives you a good feel on how to play the deck. Alright, for the showcase game, we got Teemo Twisted Fate. So this is a monkey deck. There's been a, a hot deck recently called Monkeys, which plays a bunch of these cards that deal one extra damage to you whenever uh, they die. It's really, really cool. Uh, we're going to go ahead and keep actually one Static Shock, one Thermal Beam, and we could probably pitch the Ravenous. A lot of their units have one or two HP only, so Ravenous might be overkill. I like Static because it helps kill two of them and draws us a card. Go ahead and play Teemo, see what happens. We always have Thermal on one for him. There he is, and goodbye. Minus one Teemo. The Law of the Land is that... Teemo decks always play him on turn 1, so it's good to have some extra removal, especially something that can also be played on turn 1 to match him. Nice, Mystic Shot as well. Cool. Yeah, so our game plan is going to be just shoot whatever they summon, right? As soon as we can. We can play it back, chill, don't have to do too much. They have to give us a reason to play a card, and then we'll play a card and stop them. As long as we can slow them down, we get to our Swain and Leviathan lockdown, we'll be good to go. Jagged Butcher, um, kind of down to Mystic Shot it. Mystic Shot is nice because we have three mana left for the turn, so if we pass, we'll just go into next turn floating perfect mana. Nice, alright, they burn one, we float perfectly, pretty efficient. We have extra draw to get us to more resources, like that, very good. You want to pass? Hey, you're not giving me a reason to play anything, so I'll pass too. You got it. I'm kind of down to just slam a Swain. Fear the power you do not see. I'm assuming they're going to Twisted Fate Gold card and stun him. Or Riptide Sermon. Alright. That's just kind of fine. I can't attack anymore because this is a fearsome blocker, so let's go next turn. Don't want mercy. All right. Another Schwain. All right, cool. Yeah, we can... Um, I'm actually down to block. And then play new Swain. Yeah, one that has much higher HP. Master your demons. Swindle. Okay, so they're looking at my hand and they get to choose one non-champion and put it in their hand. So they could see a variety of stuff. I'm not really sure. They, they could be on any of these. So we have to play around Static. We have to play around a Stun. Ravenous Flock Execute. All kinds of stuff. Um, We're going into turn 7. I'm down to Static, both of these. Cool. Mystic is nice. If we get Ezreal, that'd be pretty cool, too. Yep, they get to steal a card from the bottom of our deck. Oh my goodness, okay. Alright, they're popping off. Their monkeys are going to be huge. Oh, there's our Ez. Let's go. I want to play that. Ezreal is really good for us, actually, on turn 7. Because I want to go ahead and attack with him and get a free Mystic Shot. Uh, and then spend our 4 mana doing double Mystic. Trying to clean up this board here. And then we can play Leviathan next turn. Never Twisted Fate Red. Okay. You got it. I'm a people person. Go ahead and attack here. One shot, all skill. And not with Swain, because Swain dies to Butcher. So just Ezreal. Oh, they took my death's hand from the bottom of my deck. Aw, rest in peace, Ez. That's kind of lame. 
Uh, all right, let's go ahead and mystic shot this then. And my death's hand. My card. Alright. Well, we have Leviathan at least. The dead don't need riches. Yep, yep. I'll cut them up myself. Yeah, all oh, that looks good. We're gonna block you here. Grab this this. Only taking three. We don't want to take too much damage because it's pretty easy for them to kill us with monkeys. They should thank you for the food. There we go. And Leviathan. The cargo. And now we have our lockdown. So Swain will level. Leviathan will pop off. Oh no. Not more of my cards. Them taking all my removal is actually kind of annoying. I, I want this Swain to live. Don't kill him. Please. Uh, oh, that's fine. Okay, we can level Swain. Leveling Swain puts him out of Calling Strike Threshold, so that's not even the best card. They need to be on something else, like a Mystic or another Death Sand. Pick a card, that's not gonna do it. Cool. We're in a great spot now. Alright, bet. Empire above all! And then round start, this Twisted Fate is going to get stunned. Dark in the skies. We can go ahead and get an open attack. Yep. This clears the Twisted Fate. Oh, unless... You got something sneaky for me? Random pokey face. That's fine. Such little life. Yep, clear up the Twisted Fate. No biggie. And then we can do Captain Pharaon. Uh, yep, fine. Alright, we should win first action next turn now. I don't think we can die in two actions, so we should be okay. Because Leviathan is going to deal three damage round start, and then we just do a Decimate. Yep. They stole my flock. And it's so annoying having all my cards used against me. But yeah, I think we have it. We controlled the board pretty well. That's fine. We're gonna take a lot of damage. One, two, three, four, five damage. Yeah, because e each of these deal one whenever it dies, and it's going to die round end. That's a quick five damage combo. So if we took extra damage over the course of the game, we could have just died there. That's why it's really scary. Monkeys come out of nowhere and just deal so much damage. Pokey stick is fine. Yeah, we're just going to do first action decimate, right? Nice and easy. And there we go. And the last deck I have for you is a refined version of the Soraka Braum deck. So this is pretty fun too. You build a big board, get a lot of HP, uh, heal your units over and over. So if you like heal strategies in card games, like Priest from Hearthstone and other things like that, then this deck is definitely up your alley. So yeah, it plays some early uh, one cost units, uh, especially things that buff and things that self buff whenever you heal. Uh, Guiding Touch, which is a heal. Mountain Goat, which gives you a heal. Uh, Star Spring, which is an epic. This is super mandatory because it's one of the win cons of the deck. Round end, heal, damage allies won. Once I've seen you heal 22 damage from allies, win the game. So this is a one card win con, right? It's a sort of like an Exodia type mechanic where if you fulfill this effect, you instantly win no matter what. So this is really cool because there's a synergy with this called regen. So Mr. Braum, round end, he will fully heal himself. So like, let's say he goes down to one HP, he will heal back up to six, which is a heal five, right? And that bumps Star Spring up five HP, and you can kind of um, get out of control with that, right? If you give Brom extra HP through Astral Protection, and then he does big regen heals, that's kind of how you get Star Spring rolling, and how you can get this card to the win con. So we will have to invest the epics into this. It's super mandatory. You can try to play without it, and then your win con is going to be Star Shaping. Star Shaping lets you heal, and then also 
uh, generate a celestial card that costs seven or more. Now these are really big units that have strong effects and they are usually pretty game ending. So the main strategy of the deck is to beat down the opponent, stop what they're doing, keep your HP high, and then finish with star shaping, okay? So if you don't have the epics to do star spring, don't worry, we'll take that out real quick, but make sure you put them back in when you can. Same with the divergent paths. And we'll also take out the third Soraka and the third Braum in case you are a super new player. Let's get the third Star Shaping, Avalanche, Astral Projection, uh, third Hush. And then we can run something like just draw. I think draw is really good in this kind of deck. So we could run triple Aberrosian Sentry, who's another common. And the deck should look like this. If you are a super new player, uh, use your commons and rares to make it look like this. And then adjust as needed to get the epics in there and the uh, third copies of both champions. And again, this is what we'll look like with the code below. All right, for the showcase game, we got Lurk. Lurk is pretty fun, pretty scary. Uh, see what we can do against that. Pitch Tavern Keeper, pitch Divergent Paths. Uh, this deck is too fast for us to draw the landmark and then play the landmark and get to that win con. We're better off just putting up big board and trying to contest because they're going to be playing pretty aggressive. Yeah, so our units are very important and so is yeah our combat tricks and champs. We basically have to turn Braum into a one-man army versus this deck, which we can do. This hand lets us do it. Yep. Alright, we're on double troll chant. With the power of time, yep. the possibilities are endless. I turn it like so. Yeah, we'll be taken. What's this? More damage here. And we can set up our ooh, buffed Soraka. Let's go. Omenhawk Soraka hit. It's kinda crazy. We're on like two Braum, two Soraka. Yo, that's awesome. I'm down for that. Go no further. Because now we get the Soraka heal. All right, does she have to support to get the heal? She does. All right, bet. With purpose. Don't touch it. Yep, we'll make it live. Go bonk bonk. And a Volpine Wander. Okay, so we can make this Brom pretty big. If Braum takes damage, we can use a second copy of him that's going to become Take Heart to make him plus three plus three. Uh, we can also give him Overwhelm, and that's going to be kind of scary as well. And just try to use him to like beat down the board. Yep. Um, sure. Let's Braum it up. I don't really think they can build the Soraka now. Okay. Go ahead and block. I guess thanks for the Chronomancer? Huh. Built the Braum. Um, and then we should do Volpine. And then stance swap the Braum. Fine. Uh, overwhelm this. We'll be pretty close to leveling him as well. Um, wait, what if we do this? Peace. Fight. Hold up. Four one, yes, because it's actually four two. Yeah. This is fun, yes? And swing with everything as well. We might as well pressure. Only one of these is a value trade for them. We can threaten the hatchling. Soraka's gonna heal herself so she doesn't die. This is just kind of good. We're just beating down these lurk units. Yep. Soraka is also leveling round end. Because again, we have regen counting as a heal, so that's where their uh, synergy lies. There we go. Hey, let's go. 
Now, every time we heal, we get a draw. We're so terrifying, actually. We're so strong. Pike. Alright. I'm, I'm down for Pike. Haha, <laughs> they just pass. That's pretty smart. Uh, let's go ahead and do... Alpine again? Kinda down. Yeah. Alpine. We can make this Braum even bigger. Pike spell. Uh, Pike's at 4 attack? Sure. Uh, we could just take car or we could troll chant. Doesn't really matter either way. We could also Guiding Touch for draw. Yeah, it's Guiding Touch. And she'll live with one, right? Yeah, that's fine. And stance swap. Give Braum 2 2. Yeah, one man army for real. He's actually kind of massive. Deal one and then rally? Nah, fam. We're gonna buff that. Nice try, though. Very cute attempt. The blood in the water. Well, we have an outplay for that, which is making Soraka massive. And we can swing. Kill a pike. We can threaten another pike with this. Oh, it's a 611 Soraka. Terrifying. Yep. Sounds good. Look how we have grown. Leveled Soraka and leveled the Brom. At your service. Hatchung's fine. I guess my Brom is threatened by that. They didn't attack though. Okay, good. Sure. And we know they have Rek'Sai on the top here. Rek'Sai. Let's go ahead and troll chant this and this. There we go. Now Rek'Sai can't level, right? It's pretty good for us. Yep, that's fine. I'm assuming Pike is gonna attack the uh, Soraka, right? Oh, interesting. Um, I'm down to just block here. A cart this, so she lives. Uh, block here. Oh, it's fearsome. Ooh, that's pretty scary. I'm block here then. There go, just call that a day. Yeah. Seems good. Well, pike level, but it's no big deal. He's dead. Yep, yep, yep. And then uh take heart from. Pass. And we should just win on open attack. Rek'Sai did not level, so she's going back to the deck. Easy, yep. Heal. Yep. There we go. Oh, there's my Star Spring. We would have gotten a Star Spring um, victory as well, with how much healing we did with this Braum. Huh, Tellstones. Hey, yo! Oh, okay. They still lost, but that was kind of scary. And that's it for this one. To round out the video, I want to give a couple of deck suggestions. So if you liked any of these, you have a clear direction and path to work towards. So if you like the Yasuo and Leona deck that I showcased first, I highly recommend checking out some Yasuo Katarina 
or some Yasuo Aphelios lists, both of which would be really fun and up your alley. If you enjoyed the Swain PNZ deck and you want to go another direction, I highly recommend checking out Ezreal Caitlyn. Ezreal Kate is a really cool deck that plays in the same regions, plays a lot of the same cards. It's just a little bit faster and a little bit more powerful, so highly recommend checking that out with Tri Beam Improbulator. Also, there's Thai bulk variations out there. You can probably look up uh, Katarina and TF, Annie and TF, you know, things like that, and play that deck as well. And if you enjoyed Soraka Braum, you could go two different directions and play Soraka Tom Kench. You could look up a few lists for that if you like that. If you like the Braum side, you could try Braum Vladimir. Both very fun and both are pretty easy to get into. And that's it for this one. Please like and subscribe if you thought this video was informative or entertaining. It really helps me out. I'll be releasing more deck profiles, guides, and gameplay highlights in the near future. Thank you so much for watching and have a good one. Laters!